actions. What are they? Well, certainly it's a term that uh, a lot of people find rather of putting. It sounds difficult, it's actually very simple. A redox, as I'm sure you're aware, means reduction, oxidation. There are reactions for a reduction and an oxidation are happening. In fact, you can't have one without the other. Why is that? Because reduction is all about a gain of electrons, and it's not possible for something to gain electrons unless something else is losing electrons. So here we have a loss of electrons. While well, one chemical is losing electrons, other one gains, and vice versa. So there we have it, redox chemistry. One substance loses electrons, the other one gains. You might then have an oil break. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. You have to get it the right way around. So really, as an idea goes, not bad at all. Let's take an example of a redox reaction. Let's take, for example, the reaction between magnesium metal and let's say copper sulfate. Now, if you add magnesium, a reactive metal, to copper sulfate, what will happen is the magnesium will displace the copper. The more reactive magnesium kicks out the copper and takes its place. So the copper gets kicked out, and instead of copper sulfate, we now have magnesium sulfate. What's really going on? It would help if we put in some charges. Copper sulfate is an ionic compound. It contains copper ions and sulfate ions. What's happened is that we ended up with magnesium ions and sulfate ions. One thing's obvious, the sulfate has done nothing. The sulfate has simply found a different partner, effectively. It started the sulfate and it's finished the sulfate. It's a spectator, so we can pretty well ignore it. What have the other species done? Well, the copper, the copper ions, have become copper metal. Something has removed this 2 plus charge. What has happened here is the copper has gained electrons. It's gained two negative electrons. Two negative electrons have cancelled out the two positive charge. But of course, where do these electrons come from? The answer is the magnesium. The magnesium has lost electrons. As the magnesium loses electrons, the copper ions gain. When magnesium loses electrons, it forms a 2 plus ion. And there we have it. This reaction really involves two processes. There's the gaining electrons, that's the reduction step, and there's the losing electrons, the oxidation. So this reaction is redox. You know, this reaction can be seen as both a redox reaction and a displacement reaction. Both terms apply. What we could do is we could take this and split it up. We could say, what's the magnesium doing? The magnesium part of the story is this. The magnesium is losing electrons to form the magnesium ions. And that's perfectly true. However, in chemistry, we don't usually write down minus two electrons. We usually put the electrons over there. And this equation then becomes magnesium becoming magnesium ions by giving away a couple of electrons. Do not need that as a gain of electrons. This magnesium is giving these electrons away. This is a loss of electrons. Oil rig, oxidation is lost. That's the magnesium half of the story. But there's always two halves to these stories. There's the losing electrons half and there's the gaining electrons. So the other side of the coin is the copper ions gaining these same electrons and putting into copper. That's the reduction. And there we have it. Redox is simply that. An oxidation step and a reduction step. And you find these equations in the data book. You find them on page 11 of the data book. Now, if we wanted to get the whole story, we'd have to add these together. And when we add these equations together, it's important that A, the number of electrons being lost is the same as the number of electrons being gained. We have to balance the book, so to speak, and then B, having checked that, we cancel these electrons. And that leaves us with what we know happened here, and that is that when magnesium is added to copper ions, the copper ions become copper, and the magnesium becomes magnesium ions. There, that is the same as this, with one difference, there are no spectator ions. Okay, spectator ions will not show up here. 
Let's look at another redox reaction. How about something that you're not quite so familiar with? Suppose, for example, sulfite ions are added to bromine. What happens? Well, what's going to happen here is one of these species is going to gain electrons and one is going to lose. Now, if we had the data book, okay, I'll just I'll quickly get myself a data book. Here we are. One data book. We turn to page 11 of the data book. We turn to page 11. Let's look for bromine. Now we'll find bromine down here, down in the bottom left of page 11. And according to this, bromine can gain electrons and turn into bromide. You notice all the equations are reversible. Sometimes bromine is gaining electrons, sometimes bromine is losing electrons. What about sulfite? Can we find sulfite? Again, if you look long and hard on page 11, we'll find sulfite up here. Let me write down the equation that is given in the data book. It says in the data book that sulfate ions plus two hydrogen ions plus two electrons can turn into sulfite, there it is, and water. Again, it's a reversible reaction. The problem we have is working out which way are these reactions going. Well, if we start with bromine, it can only go in this direction. And if we start with sulfide, we can only go in that direction. So, they can't both be gaining electrons. It's not possible for them both to gain. One must be gaining while one is losing. An alternative way to work this out is to realise that the equation, the booming equation, which is lower down the page, the lower equation always goes that way, to the right. This equation occurs higher on the page. The upper equation always goes back the way. Anyway, here's what we need to do. We need to take these equations and sort them out. Now this one's fine as it stands. Let me just let me just rewrite the bromine equation. We know now that the bromine is definitely the one which is gaining electrons. That's all it could do here. But the sulfite is giving them away. So let me turn this equation around. We start with bromine gaining electrons, and we start with sulfite, which in the presence of water is losing electrons. There they are, it's losing electrons and turning into these species. Now, let's get the whole picture. The bromine is gaining electrons, that's the reduction half of the story. Oxidation is lost, reduction is gained. The sulfate is losing electrons, that's the oxidation half. Let's get the whole picture. What does the whole picture tell us? Well, better check. Do we have the same number of electrons being gained and lost? Yes, we do. Secondly, let's cancel the electrons. When we add these together, here's what we find. We find that when bromine is added to sulfite, oops, then there's a change takes place. The bromine changes to bromide, you will see a colour change. And that's because bromine is an orangey colour, bromine is colourless, so there'll be a colour change. And at the same time, the sulphite is also changing. There. And what else do we get from this? We get from this the fact that one mole of bromine reacts with one mole of sulphite, which could be the launch pad for a calculation later. And there it is. That's the redox reaction. Now, that one was more difficult than the previous one, and the next one will be more difficult still. Let's check out one more example. Suppose we're told that acidified permanganate, acidified permanganate reacts with iron 2. Can we work out the chemistry behind the reaction involving acidified permanganate and iron 2? Well, we need to find the two substances. Let's find acidified permanganate. Now, we should know what about this chemical. We should know it's a purple colour. Here, down at the bottom left hand corner, we have permanganate. It's purple. It has to be acidified. 
If we don't add acid, it won't really do very much. So here is the acid, the hydrogen ions in an acid. And according to the data book, page 11, this gains electrons. Acidified permanganate gains electrons and will turn into something else. It will turn into these species. But because these ions are colourless, we see a colour change. The purple permanganate will lose its colour. But it can only do this if it gains electrons. And it can only gain electrons, it can only undergo reduction, reduction is a gain, unless something else is losing electrons. So the iron 2 must be losing electrons. Now where is the iron 2 on this page? Well let's think. If the permanganate is going from left to right because it's gaining electrons, the iron 2 must be going from right to left and losing electrons. So we're looking for iron 2 somewhere here, and there it is. I'm going to write down the equation that's on page 11 of the data book. According to the data book, it says Fe3 plus, plus electron becomes Fe2 plus. Now we know, we know that this, we know that our iron 2 ions must be giving away electrons. Both equations can't gain electrons. If the permanganate is gaining, the iron 2 must be losing. And not, also, not only that, but we'll have to make sure we balance these electrons. So let's take this equation, turn it around, and multiply by 5 to create 5 electrons. So I'm going to write this equation the other way around. Here we go. The Fe2 plus, the iron 2 ions, are giving away electrons, and in doing so, turning into iron 3. However, we can't have this gaining 5 electrons unless this loses 5. So if I multiply this by 5 throughout, there, I end, up, I end up with the correct equation. This is a loss of electrons. This is an oxidation. Finally, let's add the two equations together. Now, when we add these equations together, the electrons being gained and the electrons being lost cancel, as we've said already. So what do we get from this? We get that when acidified permanganate reacts with these iron 2 ions, they react in a ratio of 1 to 5, which could be the launch pad, as I said, for a calculation. Those three species are on the left of the arrow, and on the right of the arrow, we've got the other species. Here we are. Manganese 2 plus, plus water, plus 5 Fe. There it is. You, you identify which one is gaining, which one is losing, make sure the electrons balance, cancel the electrons, add them together, and finally appreciate that this is telling us that every time one mole of permanganate reacts, it reacts with five moles of iron 2. The ratio is 1 to 5.